All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's episode of Let's Light. We've got a lot going on today. It is a huge day. Let me, let me just give you a rundown of what we got going on. We are announcing the winner of the Sci-Fi Challenge, the Sci-Fi City Challenge, a two-month challenge in the making, which during COVID times feels like 16 years, but we are ready to announce the winner. We are going to be starting a brand new series of Let's Light, something I'm going to be trying from scratch, which is lighting an entire animated shot from scratch. Uh, it's going to be a multi-episode story arc, I guess we can call that. And uh, basically what I'm going to be doing is just uh, showing you guys the process from start to finish of lighting a shot. Uh, I've never done anything like this before. I'm not going to, I don't know if it's going to go very well. I've never lit this shot before. I could fail miserably at it, but you guys can watch me in the process. So that'll be fun for you. Um, what else? We are announcing the new lighting challenge for today. And this is a really cool one. It's a very cool, cool character uh, that was designed by an art director at Disney named Chris Ayers, who is so kind and so generous and allowed us to use his uh, design. He just uh, drew up on his own. Um, and our very talented asset creator, Sarah Tarr, uh, took that design and made a beautiful uh, image. In fact, let me go ahead and show that to you all now. Let's go ahead and share the screen. Uh, So you can see here, we've got, uh, if you go to our asset library, you can see all of our assets here. If you click on Sir Desmodus Rotundus, and here he is right here. Um, again, character designed by Chris Ayers of Disney Animation and our very amazing, talented asset creator, Sarah Tarr, put this together for us. So download it, light it up however you want. You know the rules, you gotta use reference, uh, you gotta, yeah, you gotta post some reference, you gotta, you gotta integrate them somehow, and we award creativity. We, um, uh, we're like uh, you know, gymnastics or diving or ice skating or figure skating. We will award points for creative challenges. Um, so yeah, so get after it, guys. We're, and we're really, really excited to see what you all do. We're hoping to get you some more characters, um, and this is the first step in that. So. Now that we are, I think we're stable on our numbers, the people that are gonna be joining us. Hello, everybody. So, oh, Zoom link, I can get you that. Sorry, I should have shared that earlier. Let's see, where are we? Um, I'm gonna st stop sharing my screen so I can pull this up, dialogue. Participants, invite, create, oh, uh, copy, invite link, Zoom link, Drink. Okay, so there's a Zoom link there. Oh, thank you, because that got me in here and making me realize that I didn't change my name from Jasmine yet. There we go. Okay, so now let's get into the announcement of the winner. So guys, I have to tell you, this was the hardest challenge. I, I, I think I've said this before, but this is by far the hardest challenge we have ever had to evaluate ever. And it's simply because the work that you guys put forth in this is so good. Like we legitimately could have given any one of these submissions the winning. And I, I, I don't, I, I'm not saying, I don't BS you guys. You know, my students know that when I give feedback on work, I give industry level feedback, every single one of these shots, can be used on a demo reel to help you get a job. I would be impressed by any one of these. Specifically, I would be impressed by these because I have seen the asset and I have tried and I've, I've played around with it myself. So the amount of work and the dedication and the time that you guys put into all of these has been really, really benefit. Has really like, it's inspiring. It really, it's nothing short of inspiring to watch. Um, so I kind of want to go through each one very quickly. Just uh, talk about the pros and cons, um, and then announce the winner. So. Um, Arnov, this is really cool. I love the color scheme. I love the design. Uh, a couple elements. It, it feels a little low res. It feels a little bit um, uh, noisy. Uh, a little, a little artifacty. Um, I would really like to read this character a little more. I get some more rim lights or some value changes on there to get the character to pop off in the background. I like the focus back here. Um, the camera being kind of janky on an angle is fun. Um, it's really good stuff. I think, I think that you can keep pushing it though to go that extra level. Clever, you work so hard on this one. The colors are beautiful. The, the character lighting is, is, is looking really great. 
I love the atmospherics. I love the overall design of it. Um, I think that you, I know you're going to do like a camera push and I think that'll even plus it. This one is absolutely, um, really, really strong. Uh, I would maybe like to see a little more detail in the foreground, but other than that, like I said, you are, you've got some notes from Francesco. I want you to keep going with that and, and really, really great stuff. Uh, glory. Uh, this is a, this is a textbook, uh, of what it means to have, uh, um, atmospheric fall off in a shot. Uh, or aerial perspective, just that like dropping back into space. There's some detail in the street. There's a good sense of scale. Um, just, just an overall like beautiful image to look at. Uh, Jano, this, uh, this one is, it's up close. It's in the city. There's so much detail. There's so much going on. There's so much, uh, the, the neon lights are really beautiful and, and re really photo real. This feels like a living, breathing city. And, and as you look around the image, there's just a lot of variation and a lot going on. Um, Juan, really gorgeous stuff. Love the refraction on the water. Love the design of the buildings. This feels like a future, a futuristic city. You've got those really nice glows around everything. Um, another strong piece by you. And then, uh, Joy, love the integration of the character of the dog in these two shots. I know you have the animation too, but I'm just looking at this in Photoshop. So, uh, love the color scheme. I love the variation you got in all these buildings, uh, the shaping going around here. Um, and, and just, just like this feeling of scale in both and, and just, you know, uh, using this warm character over the cool background, uh, all good stuff. So you guys can see this is extraordinarily hard. Um, but like I said, with the Sir, uh, Desmodos Rotundus, we, um, uh, so we evaluate the images. The first thing I want is an image that's beautiful, um, and that stands out and is really great. All of you guys have hit that note. There was one that was a level degree more difficult than, than, um, than the others. Um, and that was, and I'll just announce the winner. So, so Jano, you're the winner of this month's lighting challenge. Congratulations. Your level of difficulty was higher because you are in the city. Most everybody else or everybody else for the most part are using the main facets of the city as a backdrop, um, as something kind of distant in a way. And there's nothing wrong with that because you guys made it look beautiful, but Jano really got in there and allowed for a little bit more depth. We're seeing more in the neon signs. Um, just a lot, just like, again, a lot of variation, a lot going on, um, a lot of play with the dark points. And, and also Jano, because of the angle uh, that you chose, you had to do a lot to get the bottoms of the building to feel deep and kind of far away and, and feel this kind of space. Um, and so this one feels very cinematic to me. It feels very much like a futuristic city. So again, to each one of you that, uh, that it submitted, I cannot tell you how proud you should be and how quickly you should put these things on your demo reels because they're beautiful and you should share them on your art station pages and you should get them and trumpet them how, wherever you can because they're beautiful stuff. But for Jano, congratulations. You've earned this. You've done a really brilliant job. Um, I want to applaud you. Uh, for your efforts there. And I want to say, yeah, congrats. And, and thank you, Joy. Uh, again, images are beautiful. I, I want each and every one of you to submit again for next month because I am, oh, hey, Katerina. Hey, Hisham. Uh, hello, everybody. Yes. So uh, yeah, I would just flat out love to see each and every one of you guys submit because it's it's been inspiring. It's been such a joy for me personally to work with each of you over the last two months on this stuff. Um, it's been a lovely uh, thing to focus on outside of the pandemic craziness. And I'm sorry if there's noises outside, if there's some ambient noise tonight, we've got uh, between the pandemic and uh, protests, they are boarding up buildings all around where my apartment building right now. So the Apple stores are boarded. They got Pottery Barn boarded. They're boarding the movie theater right next to me. So if you hear a lot of that ambient noise, that's what that is. Okay. So. Congratulations, Jano. Again, don't forget, we've got uh, Sir Desmond, uh, I always mess up his name, uh, Desmondus Rotundus, there's no N, Desmodus Rotundus. Sorry, Chris Ayers, uh, the Disney uh, art director, named him. But now I want to get into uh, lighting a scene from scratch. So, um, first things first, um, I want to, I meant to have this pulled up before. So I want to show you all, in fact, let me stop my video so I can, my face doesn't block anything. 
Um, so I just want to show you this shot. This is from Remus Lowe. Uh, Remus was uh, one of our students who did the animation apprenticeship with Becky Tower. Becky is the um, department supervisor, uh, the animation department supervisor at Pixar. Um, she's been animating at Pixar for uh, like a decade and crowd supervisor, and now she's uh, running the show, the animation department, and she's been kind enough to work with some of our students on their animation reels. So uh, Remus made this, this uh, beautiful animation, um, uh, and it's, it's really great. It's, it's emotional. It's a, it's, a, it's a more dramatic scene, and he wanted, uh, and I asked him if he would mind if I used it in a lighting example. He said, absolutely not. Um, and so, uh, so now we are able to do that. So let's hop over into Maya, which is over here. And you can see this file. So uh, one thing too is that, uh, so, so to get into it, the very first thing that I look at, let's go back to this reference. So the very first thing that I look at when I'm going to light a scene is I just, I just kind of want to analyze it a little bit because the, the thing that I'm, I'm looking for first and foremost are the hero poses of the character. Um, well, the first thing I look for is whether or not the camera's locked off. And in this case it is, so I give myself a little high five because my job just got a lot easier because now I know that all I need to do is render like one frame of the background perhaps with a shadow pass and I'm good to go and I can just focus on, uh, and I can save myself a lot of render time. But the other thing is I look at the character and I look at his positioning and I try and establish what his hero positions are. Uh, in this particular shot, there are two main hero positions. There is position one where he's looking off to the screen right and position two as he rotates and looks at the camera. So I know that when I'm starting to set up my light rig um, and when I'm designing my lighting, I know that he's going to have to look good in both positions. Um, I don't care about the eye lighting. I'm not thinking about any of that stuff now. I'm just thinking about his overall shapes and where he's, he's, he's positioned in the shot. So now that I know that, um, I can start kind of visualizing some other stuff. Like, like is there anything in the shot that's particularly, uh, that I need to draw attention to? Is there any props that he's holding? Is there anything other than his face that I really need to draw the audience to? In this case, no, it's just, it's a straight dialogue shot, not a big deal. Um, just need, need to get in on his face and get on his eyes and, and all that good stuff. So, uh, normally, and normally what I do when I first get a, sh a scene, and, and this is what I'm going to do today, I just want to play with it. I, 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 before I start lighting it for real, I want to get lighting reference uh, and, and, and study some light and based on the mood that I want to create. Um, but as of right now, I know that I want to create something dramatic. Um, and I, because of the, the, the line that's being delivered is, is pretty dramatic. But I also know that I've got a little time with this. And now if I'm working on a commercial and I need to get it done in 48 hours, I usually don't, you don't have this, this kind of goof around, not goof around, but like experiment time with it. Where you can in really kind of uh, feel free to explore the space, explore the scene and see what you're getting into. Oh, I did want to do this too. So uh, again, I'm kind of opening this fresh. I opened this once before just to make sure the textures and everything were working and nothing would break. Uh, so far, so good. Um, but the one thing that I usually like to do, because I don't, I don't like having all of the, the uh, um, animation controls on everything, I usually just go into this and just show none. And then I'll just turn on like nerve surfaces, polys, um, uh, the cam the, uh, any cameras, any lights. Um, let's see what the polys go. Polygons. And then any sub D surfaces. So now it's nice and clean. I can see what's going on with the animation. Um, I get a good sense of it. I know that at frame one, he's looking this way. And towards the end, he's looking the other way. Uh, I know that eventually I'll have to do some eye work, like I said. But as I can see here, he's blinking a lot. And we talk a lot about hiding the eye, the eye animation or like any eye ding animation in the blink. And there's a great one right there from that position, blinking out his eyes over there. That's perfect. I know I'm, okay. So that makes me feel good. Um, so let's, let's go ahead. He's, he's in this, this type of pose for the majority of the shot. So let's go ahead and see, um, let's say frame 201. Let's say that this is the pose that we would kind of want to start with. Um, and then we'll check the other pose later on. So 
when I look at the scene, I kind of want to just get a feel for it, right? And what am I looking for when I look at the scene? I'm looking for any um, bugaboos, anything that I should be aware of, anything that, because anything in the scene that's not uh, fully realistic, anything that's, that's kind of standing out to me as being, um, could potentially be problematic. Because uh, in Arnold and in most renderers, uh, light is meant to behave naturally. Like, it's problematic that the floor stops here, right? That there's no floor over here. Um, it's problematic that there's no ceiling. It's problematic that there is no front door over here. Like, as you can see from the camera angle, it looks like there's a floor mat, there's shoes, there's stairs. There should be a front door over here, but there's no geometry to actually support that. Uh, is that a deal breaker? Absolutely not. It's not a big, it's, it's actually not a big deal. It's just something that I really, really, really like to be aware of um, before I get started so that I can, uh, I can account for it. Because like, if I just created a sky dome right now, and uh, let's turn up the exposure on this, go back on the camera, render this, and I looked at it, like you would expect, like this is not what I want, right? Like this kind of light everywhere, and that's because there are no, there's no geometry blocking around him. He's just kind of exposed and wide open. Um, so, so that's 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 not great. Um, what I do, okay, so so instead of using that as my um, as kind of like my skylight, I want to do something else. Like I, 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 let's just say that I know that I really kind of want only only the light kind of coming in through this window. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and create an area light and just position this outside the window here. And just, cause again, like I just kind of want to play with this and, and usually I start with the physical geometry that's in the scene um, that like, you know, this window is on camera and therefore I know that there needs to be light coming through it. Otherwise it would be very bizarre from the audience's standpoint. Now we could do it as a night shot. We could do it as a day shot. Again, since this is just kind of a one-off shot that lives by itself and we have the control, uh, we can really do whatever we want. Um, so I'm going to look back at this camera, render it up. And this is so experimental at this point. Like I'm not even going to name the lights just because I know I don't, I, I really don't want them to feel permanent. You know, the, there's a chance, there's a slim chance that I create something that's magical and beautiful and it's going to work great right out of the box. But there is a much, much better chance that I'm going to end up deleting all of these lights. So I want you to, in this first iteration, I just want you guys to know that like nothing is precious, nothing is ideal. Um, because again, we're just, we're just kind of getting a feel for it. All right, so uh, this light that's shining through this window is actually, let's go ahead and, um, now, that we, now that we've got a pretty good beat on this, we're gonna go ahead and make this uh, a wireframe. Just so, we can always go back to it if we need to, but it's just, a little, it'll, it'll just make the scene flow a little bit faster. So looking at this, um, I'm not worried about that. Like this is kind of graying out there. Um, I know that in post in the, in the comp, I can I do whatever I want outside. Um, I'm really just like kind of looking for how it's falling into the room. And the thing that, like some of the things that I really like are um, that it's creating some really nice soft shadows um, I'm, I'm liking that it's kind of framing him up a little bit. I like that it doesn't sneak off into this room because, again, as we, as we saw at the beginning, there really isn't anything over here that we really want to see. I mean, there's some shoes and, like, little stuff, but just seeing the little bit of banister there and the little bit of, uh, of um, this hutch or whatever this is, this little bench there, uh, I think that's enough to extend the space without without – you know, feeling like we need to go into that, that room. Um, one of the things that's not great is that, you know, we're not seeing really any light on the character. There's a little bit on his neck here. Um, so, so what I want to do now is I want to start playing up, like, you know, if we're getting some daylight coming in there, uh, and let's say that this is, you know, like, like I said, this is, this is going to feel a little bit, um, a little bit like the, the afternoon light. So let's just go ahead and you know, that, that, this is going to be more skylight coming in. So let's just go ahead and make it blue and cool. And again, I'm not, color's not precious. Nothing is precious at this point. Just kind of getting a rough approximation. 
So, okay, so we got light coming in here, not really hitting the character. Um, we have a little freedom. So, uh, with the character lighting. Now, I could definitely go in and create a spotlight um, and really kind of play up that, that light coming in from back behind him. What did I grab? Is that up there? That's weird. Unless I just like grabbed his shirt and ripped it off him. I think I just did that. I think I just made a topless man. Let's see if I can bring that back into place. Well, I don't know if I can. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see. All right, let's 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 just let we'll continue on for right now. Because again, nothing is precious. We can take his shirt off, no big deal. Select him. Bring this light back around him here. Um, and now, like, we're going to roughly position it where the window is. And now we're just going to kind of crank this up. There we go. Oh, no, this shirt's on. We're good. I'm not quite sure what that is. Okay, and now we can see, okay, this is pretty cool. Now we can, we can kind of start to play around with this a little bit because it, it, you know, this feels like the light's coming in from behind him. And again, like we're faking this as two different lights coming in. And like what I want, these harsh shadows drive me crazy and I definitely don't want those. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that a little bigger because even if it's sunlight, it's passing through a window and panes of glass diffuse light um, quite a bit. And so we don't, we don't want hard line shadows because that's just, it's not great. I know it slows down the render a little bit, but it'll, it just gives us a really false reading on him and on his shapes. And cause we want to see like how this is contouring his arms versus his face. Um, so yeah, this is looking I gotta tell you, this is looking pretty cool. Um, I like the way that this light's kind of hitting the back of him here. I like the subsurface on his ears is going nutty, but um, but we can we can certainly dial that in later. Um, but I like the kind of shaping that's coming down his arm. But just because we found one position that we like, let's let's not leave it at that. Let's say that there is a window over here that's shining. I don't really like that that much. You know, maybe there's another window at the front of this kitchen. Just tone this down a little bit. That's, or maybe there's one over here and it's giving him wrap this way. Yeah, it's okay. Not crazy about that one. Keep it coming around this way. Oh. Well, that's interesting. That's looking a little better. Okay, this is looking kind of cool. Yeah, this is nice. I like the way that the light is. Again, just kind of looking at him. I like the way, oof, it's, his arm's flattening out there, but like, I like the way when the light's kind of more back here. Um, we're getting some shaping on his arm, shaping across his face. Um, Looking at this, I, I really get a good sense that light coming in from this way would shape him up really nicely. And I like the way it's kind of hitting his fingers and getting his, because this is a round dude, right? Like he's, he's made up of a bunch of circles and I kind of want to really feel that shape. So a light in this region here, as well as a light kind of back behind him here, maybe even something in the middle. I'm not sure if this is going to be two lights or one, but I like the idea of, of um, light kind of just kind of coming up over his shoulder there shining through and then yeah i think i think that's going to work out pretty well now the question is is like how do we get more light onto his face it's a tricky one so so conceptually there's a couple different things that we can do uh, i'm just going to duplicate this light this and again because we can we can fake that there's another 
window light here, and that that certainly is an option. It's a little little much, but um, the other thing that we can do is pretend that um, we've got the light coming in through the window and it's hitting the ground surface beneath him and bouncing up under him, and that's going to create some fill light on him. And just like light kind of overall bouncing around the room. So if I just go ahead and um, make this bigger, soften, soften, um, and yeah, just really take down the intensity. I move it back a little bit. You can start to see and get a sense of light coming in here and then just like, just kind of bouncing up underneath them. Cause like you really want those fill lights and those secondary lights to, to complement uh, what's happening by the key light. So, um, you know, if this is the key light over here, I didn't change the color on this one. Let's go ahead and, you know, add a little bit of warmth to this guy. Not too much, maybe in here. Now this light, is going to be a bounce of that key light. So this one's also going to be a little bit on the warmer side, mostly because it helps like tone up the character a little bit and, 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 and hit his hero color a little bit. Okay, so now this is starting to shape up nicely. We're seeing, again, just a hint of this room over here. We've got the light coming in behind him, kind of wrapping around his arm, wrapping around his finger, but we're still kind of getting in on his face a little bit and allowing that. Now, if I really wanted to zero in his face, I could, Tighten this up a little bit. Um, continue to soften. Let's go ahead and um, turn this exposure up. So see. Yeah. So now it's like still not affecting his other areas, but really hitting his face. Um, and then just like really dialing that value in there. So I can already tell that his eyes are looking crazy. Uh, his skin is looking a little bit diffused. We're gonna add, have to add some specularities into that. Um, probably gonna need to adjust his hair a little bit, but like you can start to really get a sense of the overall structure of what we're trying to build here. Um, now I, I wanna keep these relatively short. Um, and so that we're just kind of building these in chunks because I know, I don't know about you, but I lose focus after about 20 minutes of watching somebody do something like this. Um, but you can uh, you can really start to again just like feel the design starting to fall into place a little bit. Now, what do I do in this um, in this example? So, what do I do now that I have this or like something like this that I kind of get a, a better feeling of what I want? Uh, I will go and I will look up reference uh, for a similar lighting situation, things that inspire me, things that help me hit the mood because I'm not really. Like this is pretty neutral stuff and I'm not really, um, other than allowing the key light to be behind him and just kind of filling him in with some fill light, uh, there's really no mood that I'm setting here. Uh, I really, I'm just guessing at colors, like I'm just kind of slapping him around. So I would find some reference. And then next week what we're gonna do is we're really gonna start dialing this in um, with some more specific lighting. Uh, I could feel free to uh, continue to play around with this stuff, but, I, but like this is kind of starting to, to feel a little bit right to me. Um, but what I would definitely do is in my next iteration, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these lights and create ones from scratch. I, I think um, that that there are two um, major things that happen. Um, there are two major things that happen uh, when somebody's first lighting a scene that I don't want you guys to fall into the trap of. Uh, number one, I'm going to try to show my face for this one. Number one is don't treat things as if they're precious. Um, I learned this from storyboard artists and layout artists that I work with. Um, everything that they do is not going to be in the final film. So they feel like they can just like try stuff, create stuff, add stuff, remove stuff, and everything's fine. Um, and they're right. And the same thing should be true of animation, of lighting, and everybody else. Because everything that you create can be rolled back. Like if I did screw up his shirt, I could go back and fix that. I could fix any, like nothing about what we do is permanent. Um, and therefore, you know, you can go from there. The second thing, and this is totally technical, is that um, people, like so many early uh, students that get started will leave all of their lights um, without any radius 
and then they create these like really kind of harsh um, looks to them and they won't give like an accurate, accurate take on it. Like this, there's some cool stuff that, can, that we can do here and perhaps I can make the, the, the point, the, the, the size a little bit smaller, but you're starting to see things like this straight line that comes down here and like this hard line um, and these like hard shadows and they're not great and they give you a bad read. So just kind of soften your lights a little bit when you're going. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop sharing. And I wanna answer Clever's question here. And if anybody else has questions, feel free to throw them in the chat window on Zoom or, um, or you can add them to Facebook and I'll take a look here real quick. Uh, so Clever says, hi, in feature animation, would you have predetermined illustration reference to guide your lighting or sometimes you have the freedom to decide? Um, most of the time you have, uh, you have lighting reference, you have color keys that are created by an art director um, and you will have those to work with. So that would be your reference point. But even in that situation, I still, I still ignore that at first and go into the scene and just start playing around. Because there are some things that, that can um, really tell you more, more about how you're gonna light something um, just by not pigeonholing yourself into place. But uh, yeah, oftentimes when you're lighting a scene in animation, you will get a color key. Uh, lots of times on stuff that I've worked on, um, either, there are late changes to the film and they don't have time to make a color key or the color key they made is outdated and they haven't had time to come up with it again. So um, you do get, you will get freedom there. You also get freedom if you're doing any promotional stuff, like that'll come up. Um, if they're like, okay, so for this one, we just want it to be like, all you'll get is like kind of like daytime and the, maybe the sun's coming in from the right. That's all they'll tell you. And then we just want it to feel like kind of happy, glowy, like everybody's, everybody's in a good mood. Um, and then you have a lot more freedom there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean like the color keys are there and you'll match to them, but you definitely like know that as a lighter, the film looks different because you're the one that lit it, right? No one will ever make it look the same way that you did. You will add things to the film that are not in the color key that, are, that add to the scene that the art director really liked that then gets propagated to all the shots in the sequence and all the, across the film, and then all of a sudden you've designed a look thing that's been in the film. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Great, yeah, no problem. Let me hop over to Facebook, see if anybody has any questions there. Uh, square bracket to step back camera views while looking for the shirt. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think, yes, I could, yeah, you can go back. I don't think it was, I, I think, I don't know what that is, right? Like, I, like it's gotta be a shirt. Like, I really, I just, Oh yeah, look at that. All right, yeah. That's weird, man. Yeah, I done, I done broke this guy's shirt. Whew. All right, well, well, this is why you save in iterations. Um, it's really funny. So there have been scenes um, that I've lit in the past, and I'll just show you an example of this, where um, I, will, I will be going nutty because, you know, like, let's say I'll position a light here and I'm like, it's just over his head. Like, why can I see it on the table, but I can't see it on his face? Like, what the heck is going on? And it's because somebody will leave a loose piece of geometry that's off camera. Um, so the lighting package that I worked in for a long time didn't have, like, it wasn't Maya, it was a proprietary thing. And it didn't have a, a, a GUI. Um, it didn't have a, an, an ability to see it like this. So you'd just be lighting and there'd just be weird ca shadows cast in your scene. And it, it would take me forever. So always be on the lookout for straight geometry. Oh, I'm, I'm not sharing my screen when I talk like this. So you guys couldn't see any of that. It's my first day on the job. Okay, here we go. So you can see here. Yeah, you can see it's just like weird, like this weird shadow that's like, man, I know, I know there's a light above him. Like, why can't I see that? Okay. All right, back to not sharing. Um, and if there are any other questions, I think we are good. Uh, yeah, so again, a huge congratulations to uh, Jano on, on, on winning this. Um, be very proud of the work you did for everyone else, for Glory, for Joy, for Clever, for Juan. All you guys, you did beautiful, beautiful work. Put it on your demo reels. Make that the first thing that you do. And for next week, we're going to get dive more into that scene. We're going to find some reference. We're going to light the next steps. Um, then we're going to, you know, 
finalize the lighting, when to break into the layers. I'm gonna show you how to set up the comp. I'm gonna show you how to go from start to finish. It's gonna be a multi-week thing. Uh, this first week was a little bit light and we'll dive into it a little more. So have a great evening, everyone. Stay safe out there. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what the amazing work is that you guys create for the next uh, lighting challenge. So take care, have a good night. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Joy.